I'm back in my studio after two weeks in Africa. If you're like me, you like to know how to think about animals, and watching African animals in their natural habitat is revealing. One of the animals that made me especially curious is the elephant. We ended up in our Land Rover in the middle of a herd of about 75 elephants. The elephants were extremely expressive and they let us know when we were too close. They flapped their ears, trumpeted, and waved their trunks at us. Later, when we visited Sandy and Doug Grove's three semi-habituated elephants, I admired the trusting relationship they had with them. Jabu, the big male, he had grown since I saw him last year. He laid down so I could see the bottoms of his feet. I love touching his skin, which is quite beautiful, made up of tiny soft pebbles. His eyes were intelligent and they still have me wondering. The elephants are not like big dogs wagging their tails. My guess is that their personalities are more like whales or dolphins. I'd like to draw you an elephant. It's a very flexible animal and agile, which may not be what you'd expect. I'm going to start with his forehead. And I'll tell you a little bit about what I learned about elephants in Africa as I'm drawing. So he has quite a big forehead and then his trunk starts right here. It's a very muscular piece of, uh, piece of elephant, but I need to know where his tusk is gonna come out. Uh, Jabu has beautiful big ivory tusks. They're a, a kind of a cream color. And actually, he broke one of his tr tusks, which I won't show because the tusk will eventually grow back. But this trunk is extremely flexible. And this little part right here is almost like a little finger. It can be, pick things up, even really small things. And it comes out, it's very thin at the bottom and then is a little bit larger as it comes up. And it's very, very muscular. And of course, the, the skin here makes little folds and wrinkles because it has to be able to lift way up tall into trees or it will um, take dust from the uh, ground and he'll throw it up over his back and sometimes he even takes a water and in his trunk and sprays it up over his back. The elephants love water and they're very playful when they get to the water hole. Oftentimes at evening they'll come to get a drink. And they'll do a lot of playing around, especially the little baby ones. Now, now I'm going to put his eye in. And that's always the, the part that kind of anchors where er, all the other parts of his body will go. An elephant has long eyelashes. So if you like drawing eyelashes, if this was a close-up of his head, I'd have lots of those long eyelashes, which would protect him from the dust. And then he has wrinkles around his eyes, and that's how you can kind of show personality. He's quite a wise elephant, very gentle. And then right here is where they're underneath their skull forms a, like a little dip there. And that makes that elephant look like uh, that's a characteristic that would make him look realistic. And then his ear, of course, starts right here and covers up a great deal about where how his head is fits into his body. And these ears are, are kind of folded down now, but in, if an elephant wants to make himself look large, he fans those ears out. And sometimes he does it as a threatening kind of gesture. He wants someone to go away. And it's, it is very impressive. And this is where his ear will, the actual hole that goes down into his brain will be right in there. But then he's got this fur that covers it up and protects that too from all the dust and maybe he's been feeding on acacia bushes which have big thorns. A lot of the plants in Africa have big really sharp thorns. They look like needles practically. Now the top line of an elephant is not like a horse or a dog. It, he, this is where his shoulder is. He's got those massive front legs and then his backbone it makes form sort of a hump because it's a very flexible animal. This animal can run and almost looks like he's dancing sometimes. He's so agile and flexible. And those front legs, they're almost like pillars. They come down quite straight and then they, they spread out where the foot is hitting the ground. 
because they're carrying all that weight and they have some toenails, but you can hardly tell the toenail, toenails from the rest of the elephant. And then where his knees are, because he could bend this leg, maybe I'll make the other one bending so you can see where his knees are. They're way down, much lower than you'd see on a horse or a dog. He's lifting up that foot that's on the other side, and that's where his knee would be. And that full, the skin is all folded there. Now, about halfway, that's where his stomach is. I mean, I would have put it down here if I hadn't seen an elephant in real life, and it kind of goes in this, a and this angle. And his tail kind of sticks out, and come, this part of his leg comes in. And let's see, I want to make sure that he looks like he's standing on even ground. And again, this foot fl flares out at the bottom too. And then you can see where it attaches. The front legs, when they make a footprint, it's round. The back legs, when they make a footprint, it's an oval shape. And sometimes in the beautiful African dust, this kind of a bluish color in the place we were, you can see these big footprints. And at first you think, what could that be? And then you realize an elephant has walked here. And of course, our guides are so un amazing in that they know exactly what everybody's doing, the animals. They'll say, oh, well, this elephant was walking or it was running because it just looks at the, its prints and it can t the guides can tell. And their tails are really beautiful. They, they come down and then there's these wire-like hairs that, come, that are really thick that come off them. And Jabu has a very beautiful tail. And then he has covered with wrinkles. And if you could ever feel an elephant's skin, a, an elephant like Jabu, who's semi-habituated, but he lives in this place where he can keep himself clean, and it's, it's, he has all the African sunlight and gets to get wet in water holes, and this skin is quite soft, very thick. You can feel how thick it is, but it's almost like, like little pebbles when you look closely, and then there's like little hairs coming out, but I'm not gonna draw them because you couldn't really see those hairs if you were this far away to show the whole elephant. So there he is, I did it with this big magic marker so that you could, you could really get a, a, a sense of what it looked like. But now I'm going to color him in. And I have my watercolors here. And he's a beautiful grayish brown color. And the reason that I'm making him more gray is because he has not had a dust bath today. <laughs> if he was having a dust bath, well, now I said bluish gray as the color of the dust, but sometimes we saw it when it was a, more of a reddish color, and that gave the elephants more of a brownish look. I was amazed that Jabu could make, I think it was 24 different noises and this is, uh, he had been working with, with Doug Grove, who's taught him how to do this. He'd um, hear a noise that Jabu made, and then he'd get Jabu to repeat the noises. And I would think that would be very interested, interesting for scientists to know the huge array of noises that an elephant can make. And, of course, they all have meanings because they're communicating. But I was astounded to find out there are even noises that the human beings can't hear some of their sounds are so low in frequency that people can't even hear them. A person can't hear them. Other elephants can. So for a long time, they thought these male elephants stayed away from the herd and they were apart from the herd. But actually, they were communicating with these low rumbling noises. And it, that's one of the things that I think scientists want to study more about is how they communicate. Because sometimes there'll be an older female elephant that will be the... I guess I call it a matriarch, which means the woman head. And she passes down a lot of knowledge. And when they're managing these huge herds of elephant in Africa and with these big game parks and big reserves, they want to know what's going on with the, with the herds so that they can protect them and help them to thrive. So here's the basic gray color that I'm putting on Jabu. <laughs> and then I'm going to a little shadow under his his uh, stomach so that it will give a more three-dimensional look to him. Because I want him to look not like he's a cardboard cutout, but like he has a, a shape. And then this back leg will be in shadow because 
it's further away from us. And oh, I can never do justice to those beautiful ears. And they use them for fanning themselves when it's a hot day. We saw that. And that sometimes the, when you see the baby elephants, they're so cute, they're, their ears are quite thin and they keep them quite close to their bodies. And the mothers are so protective. I mean, that's how you could get in trouble with an elephant, is getting between the elephant mother and her calf. Then watch out. You do not want to be too close. And let's see, those beautiful tusks are roundish. So I'll just put a little shadow on that front one, and the back one will be in the background, so that'll be a little darker. I hope it's starting to look like an elephant. That's that kind of concave place. There, and he's starting to look like an elephant. And you can't really get an idea of the texture when he's that far away, but if you wanted to draw a close-up, you could do lots of little fine lines and wrinkles. And also that pebbly texture that I was telling you about is such a unique thing to see. Oh, Jabu, not as beautiful as the real Jabu. This skin is so incredible. It's just beautiful. I don't think an artist could ever do you justice.